O Alan atualmente ele é professor na Washington University em St. Louis. E uma das características do Alan, por ter um conhecimento muito grande de estatística e de análise populacional, ele não hesita também em entrar em controvérsias. Então, em basicamente, todos os campos onde o Alan tem pisado, ele tem participado de grandes controvérsias e não tem fugido delas. O que eu vou falar hoje é como a genética changed and is changing our view of human evolution. And so I'm going to talk about human evolution over the last two million years. And this is really when humans became humans. How can genes today tell us about the past? We do this by a concept called a haplotype tree. A haplotype is just if you take a piece of DNA from your genome and you characterize it by all of the sites that are in it and all the variations, and you, so you have a complete characterization of a segment of DNA. When this area first started going, people would just look at the haplotype tree and pretend that it was a tree of human populations. But a haplotype tree is not a tree of human populations. It's just the tree of the genetic variation of that piece of DNA. And different pieces of DNA in your genome will have actually different evolutionary histories. Now, there is information about the past in that tree, but you can't just look at the tree and tell a story. You have to extract that information very carefully, and once again, with a lot of statistics. But now we're going to use geography, because we're going to be concerned how genes spread both in space and time. The point is, as you quantify your data, you use the haplotype tree not as a tree of populations, but simply is a tree of genetic variation. And what you're trying to do is see and understand how this variation arose in time and then spread through space. So from these 18 genes, excluding this one, we can be 95% confident that humans in Eurasia and Africa were exchanging genes on a regular basis for about one and a half million years. Another way of saying it is, the hypothesis that Africans and Eurasians were fragmented from one another, that is, they were not exchanging genes, we can reject that hypothesis. And that's what scientists do. We reject hypothesis. We prove what is false. We can never really prove what is true. So in fact, the genetic date of 1.9 million years corresponds exactly to the archaeological and paleontological date that is also 1.9 million years. So we have a very good overlay of the fossil record and the archaeological record on the genes. All living humans form a single evolutionary lineage. There is no such thing as a tree, an evolutionary tree of human populations. It also means if you use the modern definition of race, which are fragmented lineages within a species, we don't have any true biological races in humans. I'm not saying that there aren't races in a social or political or economic sense, but from a biological point of view, humans are one lineage without races. So if we really under, want to understand what made humans humans and not like chimps and gorillas, that's the time period we need to focus on. And this little bit about losing a sagittal crest or getting a chin, that's trivial compared to what happened 1.9 million years ago. That's where our origins truly are. Thank you.